Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is WatchMojo founder and CEO Ashken Kubershushan to discuss how to manage while going into a recession. Okay, so I guess Fun that times. means we're going into a recession. No, the number of people, econo uh, econo economists, analysts, gurus, wannabe pontificators who say there will be a recession or the percentage of a recession is higher than it was at previous times. Usually when everybody also says one thing, the opposite can happen. Um, one of the things that I love and I tell other entrepreneurs and executives is, you know, studying finance and economics and accounting, as boring as it seems, helps you a lot. Um, I've avoided a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've avoided a lot of mistakes by having a basic understanding of economics and, and a lot of uh, above average understanding of finance. But so, yeah, so the thing that's um, interesting is it doesn't matter what you do if the you know, body of water that you're in is tainted, so to speak, right? If like we say, if, if, you're a fly, if you're a fly on a donkey's butt, you are at the mercy of the donkey, so to speak, right? So you are not immune from the macroeconomic uh, landscape. We work in free entertainment. We produce content for YouTube. So if there is a recession and people make less money, Guess what? They're not going to go spend money at the ballpark. They're not going to go maybe to the theaters to watch a movie. They're going to turn to YouTube for free content. So on the one hand, if you work in entertainment uh, and you're producing free content, it's, it's a great time to be in business. Not so fast, Mojumbo. If you are you know, producing free content, that means probably it's ad supported, right? What is the first expense to be cut if you're a Fortune 500 company? Advertising. Advertising, generally speaking, is uh, scaled back. And so in that sense, you have to make some adjustments. And the way I think you need to make the adjustments are not rocket science. You need to make sure that you're not locked into any crazy fixed overhead. Rent usually tends to be a big one. A lot of... So two Two floors in one World Trade Center would probably be better. Yes, Mike. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that made no sense. When I visited them, I wanted to be like, what is going on here? Is this candid camera? Why do you guys have not one but two floors in the World Trade Center? So that's definitely not a good idea. Um, but then there's a lot of other stuff. I always go like one-time expenses you don't need to worry about unless that one-time expense is you're buying a billion-dollar fax machine or something. But generally speaking, I think you just want to avoid uh, finding yourself caught off guard. Now, and that's also why I think a lot of investors love software businesses, especially software businesses that have recurring subscription revenue from businesses, because that usually goes unnoticed. The credit card just mm -hmm. keeps billing. Uh, but if you are a software business where consumers are uh, your clients, well, eventually, if you are making less money or you are uh, at risk of losing your job, what are you going to do? You're going to look at your credit card statement and start chopping away. I have a question for you. Oh. Would you know right now how many services you are subscribed for where you are paying a recurring monthly fee? Yes, but I just got my credit report. Okay, okay, fine. But were you surprised? You're like, oh, I'm paying for this, I'm paying for that? Uh, no, I'm pretty on top of my okay. finances. But no, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm the majority. <laughs> yeah, you see, I'm afraid to check that. Now, first of all, like having run a business for 14 years, you could argue the last six or seven, there are people that run the finance department. But I will tell you that both personally and professionally, like I'm afraid to do that analysis because there's a lot of charges. You know, I mean, we were paying for e-fax until a few years ago, and I don't <laughs> think I sent a single e-fax in like a decade. Anyway, but so the point I want to make is you should always um, see an opportunity when everybody else is screaming doomsday. We in 2007, after Lehman, doubled down in our world, and we benefited from that. And then 2011, we doubled down when everybody else was uh, retrenching, and it helped us. And I think, you know, my thinking is, you definitely want to have a strong balance sheet. You want to make sure your profit and your income statement is pretty flexible to sustain the loss of a client, to sustain you know, a surprise invoice or, or expense. Um, but I think if you're an entrepreneur, you generally want to be ready to pounce and go on the offensive in these opportunities. So even though everybody might be screaming doomsday, I think there's a lot of opportunities out there. Right. So these survival tips are not exclusive to media companies? No, not at all. I mean, I think the, uh, the, specific, the specific... Specificity? Specificity of producing content for free, putting it on a platform like YouTube, is maybe more of interest to like, YouTube creators. 
Uh, but I think, generally speaking, as an entrepreneur, you want to, instead of like battening down the hatches and going and hiding, you kind of want to be looking with a periscope and being like, what are the opportunities out there? Because there's always weaker, slower, fatter, not physically fat, you know, <laughs> just slower um, things out there that you could probably, you know, build on, improve on, integrate, and so on. All right. Well, let us know what you think and if you have any survival tips for companies going into a recession, and we will see you next time.